Today we're going to look at the excuses that we believe that seem to hold us back when God actually calls us to do something. So what is your excuse? We're going to look at the story of Moses and the life of Moses uh, and look at the excuses that he could have used to not do what God wanted for him. So in Exodus 2, Moses was born into a family that didn't even really want him. So they sent him off and uh, he was found by an Egyptian woman in Egypt, but he couldn't be taken care of by the Egyptian woman, so uh, they gave him to a Hebrew woman. And while, while he was growing up, he was walking around Egypt and he saw an Egyptian man uh, beating up a Hebrew man. And he got, he got really mad and angry and he ended up killing the Egyptian man. And at this point, Pharaoh tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled to Midian. And as we see uh, over the next couple chapters of Exodus, we see that God calls Moses to bring his people out of Egypt. We see that God calls Moses to bring his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And Moses continues to doubt God throughout this whole situation. But he, he assures Moses, this is, this is you. Uh, this is all you. I want you to bring my people out of Egypt. So in Exodus 5, we, or Moses finally goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. It was the first time he said it. And Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to do that. So we see that uh, Pharaoh gets really mad and Moses gets really mad because Pharaoh makes the Hebrew people, uh, their slave work, a lot harder. They had a lot harder labor at this point. And we see through the next couple chapters again that Moses continues to doubt. The people continue to doubt that God's not going to bring him out of this uh, situation. Through, in Exodus 7 through 11, we see the ten plagues, which is what God used to, uh, used to make Pharaoh realize that they really needed to let the people go. And you can imagine that Moses goes to Pharaoh ten different times. It says, let my people go, let my people go, let my people go. But he doesn't let it happen. And you can imagine the frustration because there's sometimes in your life where God says that he's going to bring you out of this, but you don't trust the process. You don't trust that God is going to do something when you don't really understand what's going on. And on the tenth time, the tenth plague, uh, it was the killing of the firstborn son. And Pharaoh's son was killed during this too. And Pharaoh finally said, you know what, I'm getting tired of all this anger, I'm getting tired of all this death, all these plagues on my nation, I'm going to let your people go. So as, as the people are leaving uh, Egypt, they're heading towards the Red Sea, and they get to the Red Sea, and they don't know where to go from there. But Moses doesn't really begin to doubt. Moses actually stays strong in this situation, but the people begin to doubt. They say, God, why are you allowing this to happen after we've gone through this whole process? You got us this far, and now you're just going to have the Egyptians kill us again. But he says, Moses, I want you to uh, lift up your staff in the air, and I will part the Red Sea, and your people can go through it. And the coolest part of Scripture to me is the fact that it says that they walked through the Dead Sea on dry ground. How is that even possible? Only God can make that possible. And once they reach the other side of the Red Sea, the whole Egyptian army is swallowed up in the water of the Dead Sea and they are killed. The whole Egyptian army. And this reminds me of a story, uh, actually a movie scene, out of Facing the Giants. Head coach Grant Taylor was talking to his team. He hadn't had a winning season in six years, but he finally realigned with Christ. And he needed help from a senior leader, Brock Kelly. And they were talking about this game that's coming up. And Brock continued to doubt that they were going to win this game because this team was really good. And he says, Brock, I want you and Jer Jeremy to come here. And you're going to do the death crawl. The death crawl is where you're on your hands and your feet. Your knees can't touch the ground, but you have to carry somebody on your back. He says, Coach, you want me to go to the, what, the 30-yard line? No, I want you to go to the 50, but I want you to do a blindfold. And he says, how am I supposed to do that? That doesn't make any sense. He says, I want you to do a blindfold because I don't want you to look up and quit. So they go through this long um, scene where uh, he says, don't give up on me. You cannot give up on me. And he says, I don't have enough strength to go this far, coach. And he says, don't give up on me. This is all heart. You've got to find strength from within. Do not give up on me. And after he gets to, the, he gets to a, couple, a couple yards down and he says, 
come on, Brock, you got ten more, you got ten more steps, you got five more steps, and you got two more steps, and he finally gets down to his last step and he collapses. And Brock gets, or Coach Grant Taylor gets in Brock's face, takes off the blindfold and says, Brock, you're in the end zone. And after going through that pain, it just reminds me of the Israelite people. After going through that long process of saying, or God saying, I'm going to get you to that point. You just have to trust me through all this anger, through all this defeat. God is going to bring you through this. And it was the same situation with God. And it's the same situation with you. You have to trust that God is going to get you to that other side. You might be hearing that God's going to get you to that other side, but you aren't trusting the process. Moses could have used his, his excuses. That he killed a man, that he was 80 years old, but he didn't. He let God use him. So what are your excuses for not allowing God to use you in your life?